Hi everyone, welcome back to American Trinity University on our series on reconciling science and religion. And uh, these are small clips and we move them along rather quickly. So we call them Let's Talk, Let's Talk. All right, let's look at a way to get to God. And um, yeah, this is the easy way, it's just a model. It's, it's, it's a way to logically get to God using some of today's scientific ideas and using uh, Gödel, uh, which we call him Godel, but the German word is Gödel, for um, his modal logic. And basically we're going to combine those two and show you that there's probably a pretty easy way to get to God if today's theories are true. Uh, first of all, let's look at, at where science is. Okay, so we're sitting over here and uh, we got ourselves a bunch of dots all evenly spaced out, okay? And um, so out of that, we get a big bang. All the, one of these little pieces hits another piece and causes a chain reaction. So everything flies everywhere. Now, here, here's the problem. The problem is, what came before the collision? What set everything into motion? So if there's a person back there, if there's a, um, if there's a, a god, Something that pushed that little particle into motion, okay, created the Big Bang. Um, that's called the unmoved mover. So he's unmoved, and he moves something, and he sets everything into motion. So all of a sudden, we get the Big Bang. Boom, everything happens. So what do they do? They find out as we go along, like in the center of all those spiral galaxies everywhere, where the stars are spinning out there, right in here, there's a black hole, okay? Now, the concept is these black holes suck up light and everything. And to me, it's still shocking that people like Hawking believed that everything went in and nothing came out. It's like, well, you know, how does that fit physics at all? But the idea was it just sucks everything in into this, time, this black hole and nothing ever comes out. Well, now they're having second thoughts. They're thinking that maybe on the other side, the matter is going in and it's coming out. And it's doing it again. They call them um, mini black holes and, and white holes. So on the other end, you get yourself, you go in with a black hole and you come out in a white hole because it's all bright. Everything was flashing, flying out, and it starts all over again. So that's kind of where the theory is, okay? Now, the math seems to back it, and, and they call it M theory now. It used to be called string. And the problem is, to make the math work, you have to have multiple universes. I think they're up to 11 now. All right, To make their math work and with string theory, or M theory, they've got to get to 11 universes. Okay, so here's how Godel, or Gödel, his modal logic goes like this. If God can exist, in any one of those universities, universes, then God exists. And here's why. Now remember, in the earlier in this series, uh, we tried to define God. We had to start with a definition. And we started with a very, very basic idea. And the premise is God's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's outside of time. Or he or she, we don't know. I think it's too narrow to define God as a he or she. But basically, you've got, you've got this, this idea that God is everywhere. So here's the deal. If... God exists in just one of those universes. What do they call them now? I think they're called multiverses. So if God exists in any one of them, by definition, he has to exist in all. And um, so that's a bas basically an ontological proof. So, BAMO, God exists. 